Let's actually get into the games, and we will start it off here with Alabama and Texas. And you know what? I am going to zoom this thing up so that you might can see it just a touch better. There we go. All right. So, like I said about the postgame win expectancy, let's see. Postgame win expectancy, Texas 80%, Alabama 20%. No, I don't know exactly how accurate that is. Uh, Bill Connolly believed that Alabama's postgame win expectancy was still better than 50%. And, yeah, if you look at it, uh, based on the yards per play, 5.9 to 5.5, based on total yards, et cetera, the turnovers. Um, guys, I like looking at these numbers, it, these two teams were pretty equally matched. But, man, Alabama only had 19 plays against Texas where the ball was snapped more than six seconds on the play clock. Now, that's uh, the guys over at College Football Nerds that talked about this. Uh, apparently, yeah, it, it's by design. O'Brien does this over and over and over again. Bill O'Brien, the offense coordinator. I am so tired of watching this offense. That should be an advantage. And, and it is. Um, but it should be an advantage, and it's not because – they try and find a way to, like, they overthink things. It's, for whatever reason, they try and make things more difficult than they should. And and this is what I will, this is how I will explain it to you. Um, I took a picture last night of the screen. Here's, uh, here's what Alabama did. In their first three quarters, they had 186 yards, six first downs, and 15 penalties. In the fourth quarter, they had 188 yards, 10 first downs, and zero penalties. Basically, they get down to crunch time, and Nick Saban tells Bill O'Brien, okay, quit it with the pre-snap crap, and just go out and let Bryce and whoever else win the game. Do the quick reads. Don't do a bunch of motion. Don't do a bunch of shifting. And just play college football. This isn't the NFL. And that's the biggest difference that I could find. The... Alabama defensive backs, really not great <laughs> yesterday. Uh, but I will tell you this, if the referees that were in Kinnick Stadium had been in Austin, I think Alabama would have had about three penalties <laughs> on the whole day. Uh, good gracious. So, oh, yeah, uh, Humphrey uh, jumps in. How about some likes for Gary? Yeah, go ahead and like the video, if you would so kindly. I would certainly appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's... And last year... Alabama averaged eight penalties per game on the road, and they averaged 5.7 at home. And this is the same situation. They they don't have the same poise at home as they did on the road. It's, it's very strange when you look at it. Um, you look at the things that were working for Alabama, there weren't many, but EPA per rush was certainly up there. Now, part of that is mainly because they had a – uh, an 80-something yard touchdown run in the first quarter. And that was the only touchdown that they had for a significant amount of time. As far as Texas goes, uh, their side of it, they had multiple opportunities to score, and they had to settle for field goals. And then, of course, everybody remembers at the end of the half, uh, that was just brutal. All right, uh, the, the what's the kid's name? The kicker was uh, Burt Auburn. Yeah, he had to uh, go out for like a 19-yard field goal and just completely whiffed on it. I mean, just unbelievable. So, yeah, Texas had their opportunities. If you're Steve Sarkeesian and you want to win that game, you have to know that you are going to have to score touchdowns instead of field goals, right? You got one touchdown. You got four field goals. Now, Quinn Ewers going out early, early second quarter, uh, well, middle of second quarter, whatever it was, definitely not ideal. And I will tell you this. I think that kid is a legitimate, like, hardcore talent. Like, he is really, really good. He showed better in this game than he did against ULM last week. Now, part of that might have been by design, obviously. But that was that was very impressive to me. Uh, if you look at what he did before that, uh, he was 9 of 12 for 134 yards. I mean, he was, he was smoking. <laughs> like, really... Really good. Uh, neither of these teams turned the football over, so that was good. Nice, uh, nice clean game. But when you look at the scoring drives, that's where it gets to it. Um, yeah, I mean, you had a 57-yard drive for Alabama that ends in a field goal. 67-yard drive for Texas ends in a field goal. 
81 yard touchdown run. You had a, let's see, one yard touchdown run from B. John Robinson, six plays, 75 yards. You have, again, short field, but six plays, 24 yards. You kick a 33 yard field goal. Like, it, it's so irritating if you have, if you're a Texas fan to know that you had this many opportunities, right? A 24 yard field goal, a 33 yard field goal. You attempted like a 19 yard field goal. You had a 26 yard field goal. At some point, you have to score a touchdown if you're going to win the game. So, is what it is. Uh, Humphrey jumps in and says, it was a joke not having the dogs ahead of Bama anyways. Yeah, I mean, Georgia uh, didn't exactly blow Samford out yesterday. <laughs> so, look, all of these ratings are, are rankings, excuse me, are ridiculous at this point in the season because you have no idea what you're going to get. So, everybody thought that Ohio State played a pretty good game against Notre Dame last week, and we see what Notre Dame did. Regardless. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.